Hey, wonderful people. Today, let's look at the magical mystery of what is light. In fact, light is the energy thrown away by atoms because it doesn't want it. I've been fascinated by light and what is it all my life. I worked on this film for PBS, Public Broadcasting, a series called Origins. It looked at the birth of the universe. And the most amazing thing I learned from working on that is for 200 million years, the universe was dark. The so-called creation moment, the Big Bang, that's always depicted like this. Boom. A giant bright explosion of well, actually, it was dark. <laughs> the expanding early universe, in fact, the first 200 million years, was completely dark. It's only when it cooled down, a magic moment where atoms became stable, that excess energy was released in the form of a photon that we, with our eyes and other instruments, can see the electromagnetic spectrum of photons. And here is the first baby picture of our universe. Nothing could be seen, because there's no photons, before this magic moment. I think that little but enormous fact is really interesting. But light itself is fascinating. There's various ways that light can be made that you probably aren't aware of. Here's some of the strangest ones. You can hit rocks together and make light. You can crush bits of quartz and make piezoelectric light. You can see this blue energy emanating from the water surrounding a nuclear reactor. But one of my favorite secret sources of light was discovered by the Germans in 1939. When their U-boats produced light deep underwater with the rotation of their propeller. What was going on? Today, let's look at the mystery of light. Sonoluminescence. The first time I saw sonoluminescence was in a darkened room. I was transfixed to look at this uh, spherical flask of fluid and you look into the center and in the center see a, uh, a glowing blue purple light uh, which could be seen with the unaided eye. It looked like a star in the heavens. Seth Putterman called it a star in a jar. A tiny spot of bright light contained in a flask. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a liquid. At first the bubble expands and then suddenly bursts. This contraction loses energy. That energy has to go somewhere and it emerges as photons of light. Science now thinks that sonoluminescence might hold the key to fusion power. The temperature of the exploding bubble is hotter than the center of our sun. One of the mysteries of sonoluminescence is to 
determine exactly how hot the interior of the bubble gets. In the sun, the interior can be millions of degrees, hot enough to uh, cause fusion. And the thought crossed my mind that perhaps inside the collapsing bubble, the interior of the bubble might also get hot enough to cause fusion. If this does turn out to be true, it's amazing. The bubble's temperature will be over 10 million degrees and could burst the bubble that is the problem of fusion power. Possibly all thanks to the German U-boats, whose propellers glowed underwater with sono-luminescence. And there's another mystery about light that might be solved by looking at a strange force of nature. For centuries, eyewitnesses have reported seeing an inexplicable phenomenon. Strange lights emerging from the ground or weird glowing lights in the sky. These are known as earthquake lights. Today, a fascinating new theory confirms they are real and offers a possible explanation, one drawn from existing laws of physics. That explain how rocks under immense pressure might emit light. I became fascinated by strange earth phenomenon as a child. The Brocken, Will-o'-the-Wisp, St. Elmo's Fire, and a story from North Wales of pillars of light rising out of the ground. For hundreds of years there have been legends associated with strange earth lights. They were a possible source for dragon sightings, ghosts, evil spirits, and in our culture, flying saucers. Most of these reports came from places in the world with strong seismic activity. But earthquake lights, due to their fleeting nature, have been hard for the scientific community to research, record, or explain. Few photographs exist. Even today, with camera phones, there are only a few blurry snaps and some CCTV footage. But all that changed on the 13th of March 2011, when the Sakurajima volcano erupted in Japan. Scientists studying the volcano had set up a remote camera to record any possible volcanic activity. What they recorded stunned them. For the first time, the Earthlight phenomenon was recorded in real time. What this footage triggered was possibly a whole new scientific model of how these lights could be produced. To understand this new theory, you first have to understand a very ancient concept, how light is made. The early universe had no light. The first ancient glow only emerged after atoms of hydrogen and helium became stable. The clouds of primordial gas became transparent, releasing our first source of light. In a strange correlation to the Christian Bible creation story, after a period of darkness, the forces of nature said, let there be light. The universe lit up 
when billions of atoms released their energy from a highly charged state and fell into the stable form we see today. This is one way that photons and light are produced. Imagine a hydrogen atom. It's mainly positive nucleus surrounded by a field of negative energy that we call an electron. There's no single electron particle, more a probability, a negative state of charge hovering above the nucleus. But that strays into the weird world of quantum physics. Keeping it simple, these electrons can exist or orbit the atom at different heights. Think of an aircraft or a satellite circling the Earth. When in a highly charged state, an electron can circle in a higher orbit. But when less excited, it drops down into its more stable orbit, attracted by the pull from the proton's opposite charge. But energy is neither created or destroyed. And here's my analogy. Just like an aircraft landing, the electron has to shed or reduce power to descend into a lower orbit. It does that by losing its energy in the form of a photon. And that is how light is produced by atoms. And to end, the strangest source of light, Cherenkov radiation. It's another example of the conservation of energy. From what I understand, it works like this. Energetic nuclear energy wants to go faster than the normal speed of light in water. They can't. See, so yet again, energy is conserved and photons emerge. So in our known universe, light is the energy that atoms throw away. The truth is out there.